Now, the new topic that we want to talk about is uh, exponential smoothing. In multiple period, moving average forecasting, let's say you want to forecast week four, you look at your past actuals, and then you do a forecast for this week. Now, if you want to forecast week 13, you will rely on your last actuals, and then you do a forecast for week 14. But uh, someone may say that this method is too primitive because it ignores all of the past data. Like when I'm, when I'm forecasting week 13, it ignores all of the data that I have before week 13. So the idea of exponential forecasting is that we don't want uh, a method that just relies on the last phenomena. We want all of the past data somehow to be used in the calculation. That leads to what we call exponential smoothing. So, okay, let's do, we go to cell and we call it exponential smoothing forecast. And if you want to do exponential smoothing forecast, uh, of course, if let's say, let's uh, assume, like we already know actual, so we are just uh, trying to to simulate how would we um, do exponential smoothing if we had been hired uh, in uh, month one. If I was hired in month one, what would be my forecast for month one? It's not even zero. You cannot have any forecast, right? If you are hired and month one is going on, you're not going to have any forecast. You don't have any basis for any forecast. Now, listen, think carefully about this. At the end of month one, what would be your forecast for month two? 172. Exactly. Because that is the only thing that we know. So, so you see, this is somewhat realistic assumption that we will rely on the only information that we have to predict the next months based on the only data points that we have. So far, very easy. Now, exponential uh, smoothing says that my forecast for the next week, for week three, uh, month three, or time bucket three, so now I have a question for you. If you want to forecast for week three at the end of week two, uh, what would be your forecast? 194.5. Why? I took the uh, average of month one and two. Yeah, so now you are using two period moving average. Yeah. But uh, okay, you may have this uh, argument with yourself that Okay, look, this 217 is very important for me because this is the last observation. And depending on the weight, you know, uh, two period moving average basically gives the same weight to this. Let me show you what you do. Basically, you say this plus this divided by two. This is two period moving average. And you are giving them the same weight. But what if we want to give them different weight? What if we want to give more weight to 217? Okay, so then we can have a coefficient, let's call it alpha. I write alpha here. Alpha is a coefficient that we are going to use like a weight, that how much weight I want to give to the, to the last observation and how much weight, weight I want to give to the rest of observations. Uh, so that would lead a, to, the, to a different month mindset that says, okay, my next forecast would be 60% of my actual and 40% comes from somewhere else, okay? So that kind of forecasting, uh, there are two formulas for this kind of forecasting. So basically these two formulas are the same and what the method is saying that my forecast for the next time bucket. Okay, so the logic is this. I'm going to rely 
with a coefficient of alpha on my last actual. My last actual, if I'm predicting t plus one, my last actual is t. So I'm saying that I will get alpha percent of my last actual, let's say 70% I rely on my last actual. And then for all of the past actuals, uh, or uh, all of the past values and all of the other things combined, I will consider my last forecast. So alpha percent of my actual, and let's say if it is 60% for my actual, then I will go one minus alpha, which will be 40% of my last forecast. And because my last forecast is based on other past information, somehow all of the things that I've done in the past is involved. Alpha percent of my last actual and one minus alpha percent of my last forecast, which in this example that I'm just telling you with an alpha of 0.6 would be 60% of my last actual plus 40 percent of my last forecast okay let me, let me write this 40 percent of my last forecast okay um, but if you do the math uh, you know uh, you, you will see that it is this formula the formula that i wrote at the top it is mathematically equivalent of saying that my next forecast is my last forecast plus alpha times the, my last actual minus last forecast. The first formula, alpha times actual, last actual plus one minus alpha times my last forecast is equivalent to saying that um, I will rely on my last forecast and I will calculate alpha times of my last actual minus my last forecast. Can you tell me another name for this? Your error. Exactly. So basically, the idea is much simpler than whatever you see here. Basically, exponential forecasting says that, okay, my next forecast would be my past forecast plus, okay, my last forecast may not be very good. It has some error. So I'm going to consider alpha percent of that error. If I've underestimated, I will add it now. If, it's, if I have um, overestimated, I will subtract it now. To do my exponential forecasting, therefore, I need to know my error. You have to find my error. So my last error last time was actual minus forecast. This is my error. So my next forecast would depend on my last forecast. And now I'm going to add So to do the forecast for week four, I rely on my forecast for week three, which is 172, and I will get 60% of this 45. Now tell me, in my forecast for week two, did I overestimate or I underestimated? Under. Exactly. I underestimated. So I'm going to get 60% of this 45, and I'm going to add it to 172, so my next forecast will go up. You see that? And now for my forecast in week four, I also need the error. So basically, I will need all of the errors all the time. And now my forecast for week four would be my forecast for week three. And then I will add. 60%, don't forget to press the star sign, of the error. And notice that now my forecast went a little bit down because my last forecast was a little bit high and my error was negative. Now my next forecast goes 
down a little bit. And now I look at my error. Uh, my error is basically actual minus forecast. Now this time I again underestimated. So now my next forecast will be my last forecast plus this much of the error that I made. Okay, we don't want to type this formula all the time. So I'm going to copy this formula down and I always want to point to cell F1, right? Are we going to point to any other cell for alpha? No. So let's make this F1 an absolute address that is not going to change ever. So I made the F1 a fixed uh, absolute address and I can copy this down. So my forecast for month 12 is my forecast of month my forecast for month is my forecast plus 60 percent of this error okay so i need to calculate all of the errors as well so let's do that and error is always actual minus forecast so we don't have to do anything just copy that down now I have all of the actual minus forecast and my forecast for week 12 also is there. Now I can use this method of forecasting um, and uh, I can forecast the next week, week 13. But I'm not, go I'm not sure if I'm going to use this method of forecasting or not. Are we sure that we are going to use this method? Uh, it depends, like we have to compare it with other possible methods, like for the same data, we have two period moving average, three period moving average and so forth. And here we have mean absolute error in the case of if you use three period moving average was the best one, uh, 32, and our prediction would be 206. Now if we use uh, exponential smoothing, our uh, prediction for next week would be 204. Uh, uh, if we use the three period moving average, it is 206. I don't know if this exponential forecasting is better or uh, should I report my exponential forecast, this value, or I have to report my three period moving average. How can we make a judgment about that? How can we make a decision? Is this uh, exponential forecasting better or the three period moving average which was the best on all of this is better which one maybe you have to average the error in uh, exponential exactly now we have to find the error here and find out uh, which one is better okay so we have the error we find the absolute error. Okay, so you are following me, lovely. So now we have absolute error. I find mean absolute error. And then I can compare the mean absolute error here. Average of these absolute errors. This is mean absolute error for this exponential smoothing. Let's compare it with, uh, it is 36, this is 32. So which one is better, exponential or three period moving average? Three period moving average. Three period. Yes. Yeah. However, notice that I chose this alpha, like how much is the weight of the last actual, or how much weight I want to give to error, how, no matter how you, interpret it. This alpha, I just chose it uh, randomly. Uh, what if we choose a different alpha? How many possible alphas are there? The infinite? Or well, I guess it's, it's a bound between one and zero? Yes, but it, there are infinite numbers. 
Uh, so there are, you know, there are infinite possibilities between one and zero. And now we want to find uh, the best alpha. And to find the best alpha, actually, uh, we have to use Microsoft Solver. So let me check if I have Microsoft Solver. Somewhere, yes, I have it, but you may not have it. So let me uh, guide you so you uh, add Solver to your spreadsheet. Notice that this part of the question cannot be asked from you in a written exam. Only in an Excel exam you can be asked to find the best alpha out of infinite number of possibilities. So what we want to do is that okay, uh, please start your Excel application and follow me. We go to File, we go to Options. I go slowly so all of you can follow me. And I go to Add-ins. Then you have to find Analysis Tool Pack. And then you click on Go. For a MacBook, I found mine under Tools and then Add-ins. Tools. How about one of the Mac people share it with the other Mac people here? Analysis. So under MacBook, you go to Tools and then scroll down. It says Excel Add-ins, and then you just check Analysis Tool Pack. Oh, why is this open? Oh. So. So now for PC users, uh, we go to. Am I still uh, sharing? <laughs> no, I took over. Okay. So now we go to options, add-ins, we click on analysis tool pack, and then when we click on go, there is a bunch of options that you have to choose for. And at least use analysis tool pack, uh, the first one, and the solver. This window didn't show up for Mac people. Okay. So now all of the PC people, please go to your data tab and you should see the solver. Please confirm that you can see the solver. I got it. Yeah. Yep, we got it. Me too. Lovely. Now what, what, why do we need the solver? The reason is that this point 0.6 that I chose here is just a random number that I coined. It's not really the best alpha for this company. Uh, we already know that if we use the alpha of point 0.6, we will have mean absolute error of 36. But if we would have used uh, point 0.5 or point 0.3 or point 0.4, we might have smaller error which could be better than three period moving average. So we want the solver to find out the best alpha for us. And this is what we do. So I click on solver. Do you see the pop up? The goal is to minimize the error. Now in this spreadsheet, where is my measure of error? Just tell me the cell number. In this spreadsheet, which cell has my measure of error? E14. E14. Very good. And I don't have to type it. I just click, I click here. Then I click in this cell and it puts it there. So I want, my goal is to minimize my error by changing what? Alpha. What do we want to change? Yes, yeah. exactly. Four. Yes. We want this alpha to change. We want Excel to basically go through all of the possible alphas and minimize this. Go through all of this and minimize this. Okay. 
So we click on solve. And then it says, do you want to keep it? Of course, we want to keep it. And now we have the best alpha. Out of infinite possible alphas. And now, if we use this best alpha, and if we had used uh, exponential smoothing in this company, and in the all of the past 12 months, the, the amount of error, the average absolute error that we would have is 31. Is this better or three period moving average? The exponential. Exactly. Exponential. So, yeah. So after all, I'm not going to report to the management or chief executive team that my forecast for week 13 is 206. Actually, my best forecast for next week, which I, if I had used in the past, would give me the minimum error, is uh, exponential forecasting with this alpha. Therefore, my forecast for um, Therefore, my forecast for week 13, month 13, is 191.8. There are three measures of evaluation, and there are many different methods of forecasting. So maybe I write it here. We have, for forecasting, we have N period moving average, and then we have exponential forecasting we have linear regression so let's think about this how many different n period moving average forecasting exists so there are infinite number of n period moving average exists there are infinite number of exponential forecasting exists and there are many different of uh, linear regression uh, uh, a mean different regression, which is one of them, is linear regression that exists. Now, um, I'm, we have the option to each to use each one of these forecastings, and to compare them, we have the evaluation methods for which we will simulate if we had used this method of forecasting, how much error we would have, and the evaluation methods can be. Um, mean absolute error, mean squared error, and mean absolute percentage of error. There's a, just look all at this. this these are all of the possible forecasts. So the only thing, the best thing for you is just to, to understand what we are doing instead of trying to memorize it. Any of these cells can happen. We can have two end period moving average forecasting that we are comparing with mean a squared error or mean absolute percentage of error or so forth. Also, we can compare um, uh, in this direction. We have a three period moving average, which we want to compare with an exponential forecasting. Uh, that's another possibility. <laughs>